Hello, my name is Patrick Bourne. I'm a Cisco Technical Marketing Engineer for SPARSIP Endpoints. In this presentation I describe the phone's RC process. An overview on the, of the RC process is a normal device is simply burned with a special image at the factory and uh, when the device is first powered up it contacts Cisco for a pointer to its final provisioning server. And Once the device accesses its provisioning server the provisioning server sends it its final configuration. Here's an overview of the process. So if you look at the top left corner, the icon depicts Cisco. Underneath it is the service provider and then finally on the bottom left is the residential user. On the top right is the Cisco data center and on the bottom right is the service provider's data center. So imagine if you will at the top left the device is manufactured at Cisco's factory and is then sold to a service provider. A data entry is sent to Cisco's data center. At the same time, the device's MAC address is associated with the service provider. When the service provider sells the device, the service provider associates the MAC address with, with the customer that purchased the device. And at that point, sends a entry to its provisioning server associating the MAC address with the user. When the device is powered up at the customer, the device contacts Cisco's provisioning server and sends its MAC address. A database lookup takes place and the device is then provisioned and enabled and then linked to the service provider's data center. The phone then makes contact with the service provider and sends its MAC address. At that point, the data center downloads the customer's account profile to the specific phone. So some common questions. How secure is, is this whole mechanism? The answer is it's pretty secure. The network connections are secured. The database itself is secured in Cisco's data center. Cisco gets no information about the end user, only the MAC address. The device contacts Cisco's servers only once, and that's the first time it's powered up. Even when the device undergoes a factory reset, it still knows who the service provider is that it's been associated with. So after a factory reset, the device will return to the service provider and not to Cisco. So here's an overview of the RC setup process. Basically, a service provider works with a system engineer who works with the voice engineering team to develop a specific provisioning profile for the stock keeping unit. The goal is to keep the provisioning profile as simple as possible, so it is very minimalistic information is included. The sales team provides blank evaluation units to the service provider, and then the service provider performs tests to see what unprovisioned behavior looks like. The Cisco voice team will put the final provisioning profile on the RC servers. The service provider then performs performs tests and verifies that the profile is correctly loaded. If any changes are needed, these changes are made during the evaluation stage. The service provider will then perform a retest and then provide written acceptance of the process. And at that point, engineering will place the profile into the RC server. Here is a sample profile. Take a look at the first line where it says restricted access domain. It keeps the device associated with the service provider. There is a profile rule which showing you it is using secure socket layers or HTTPS to locate a provisioning server and file which is named for the device's MAC address. That is the $MA at the um, second line on the extreme right. And then the device will attempt to resync every 15 seconds until it gets its profile. In the event of an error, it will wait 15 seconds. These numbers are configurable. The remaining four files simply describes how the device resolves server names. So that, in summary, is the remote configuration process. It is really very simple, yet very efficient. Thank you for your attention.